Hi there, everybody. Look, I'm really sorry that I've been out of pocket for so long. Uh, I'll get to the reason why in a moment. But first, uh, I have a really fun topic that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, today, we're actually going to talk about the law of attraction. More specifically, the truth about the law of attraction. And yes, I am that pompous that I believe that I've discovered the truth about the law of attraction. Let me explain. Now, this was prompted from uh, some information that I ran across recently um, from quite a few skeptics of the law of attraction. Uh, essentially, uh, there are a few articles that have been written by influential individuals who say uh, that the law of attraction is a bunch of crap. And if you read anything by a scientist on the subject, they say the same thing, that it's just it's a hoax, it's to sell books, etc. One guy in particular actually presented an argument that made sense, though, uh, and it was, you know, talking about the secret. Uh, there was a, a clip in it uh, where a guy was stuck in traffic, and uh, he was just having a bad, bad morning, and he ended up getting to work late or whatever. And the concept that this skeptic uh, presented was, um, you know, the idea that according to proponents of the law of attraction, what you're saying is that if you have these negative thoughts, uh, then you're going to attract to yourself traffic. So does that mean that just because one guy has negative thoughts, everybody that's stuck in the traffic uh, is stuck in the traffic because of him? Or maybe they all thought negative thoughts too? And when you put it in terms like that, it does seem kind of preposterous. Until you really dig deep into the truth. And the truth of the matter is, um, I don't necessarily think the message is that your thoughts are going to manifest in the, in the physical world these big obstacles, like attracting an entire street full of traffic to you. But what your thoughts do is actually affects your reaction to the outside world. So what I like to do is present an analogy, a comparison, if you will, okay? You have the gentleman who's stuck in traffic. We'll continue with the traffic analogy here. You have the gentleman who's stuck in traffic. He notices that he's stuck in traffic. He's going to be late. He's freaking out. Um, if this is going to affect his judgment, every time he tries to pass another car, he's probably going to do so in haste, and it's going to end up being a poor decision. Uh, and poor decisions compounding end up making him even later. Uh, he's in a more aggravated state. So when he gets to work and he's aggravated and he's late, um, this could obviously create a domino effect of very negative circumstances. Whereas if you have somebody who subscribes to this concept of uh, the law of attraction and they believe you know, positive thoughts manifest positive results, uh, maybe even they do believe that they can dissipate the traffic through their positive thinking. What happens is, they don't worry about it so much. When they're not worrying about it, they're thinking about other things, maybe doing a little meditative exercises while they're driving, and the next thing you know, they look up and they're at work, and they're not late. Um, during that period of time where they weren't focusing and thinking about it, they were actually making better decisions when it came to how to maneuver out of the traffic. So, who cares whether or not the science behind it was actual science or it was a psychological thing um, and science debates this often too um, there are some people who are studying in the field of quantum mechanics and they're looking deep into this issue apparently because the brain is made of 50 to 70 percent water they believe that it creates a field called a cortical field and that field can interact with frequencies uh, that are given off by thoughts and fields of other individuals. And then there's a lot of people in the science community who think that's pure poppycock. Um, my argument is, unless you're one of the scientists trying to figure it out, who cares? Uh, and this is my argument to the, to the opponents of the law of attraction who aren't scientists, the ones that just want to write blog posts and articles about how it's it's total crap and, and, and it doesn't work. You know, why send out that negative message? Who actually cares whether or not it's a quantum uh, dynamic event or whether or not it's a psychological event? Whether or not it is actually manipulating the physical world around us or whether or not the only changes that are occurring are within your own mind. 
quantum dynamic event or psychological event. Unless you're one of the scientists, who actually cares as long as it works, is my point. I'll give you another example. Um, because I'm really liking, you know, how this kind of ties into intuition. Um, one of the things that proponents of the Law of Attraction uh, state often in the literature about the Law of Attraction is that your thoughts create frequencies that can be sent out and picked up by other people. This is that whole cortical field thing I was just talking about. Now, when they're picked up by other people, this tends to attract to you people who can further you in your goal um, or repel people from you if the thoughts are negative. And the idea is that if you focus a lot on these positive things and you're going to attract circumstances and people that can help you along the way. Now, like I said, I don't know enough about the science to know whether or not that whole cortical field theory is, is, is true or even possible. Uh, but once again, let's look at an analogy. Let's, let's take the two. Let's say you're somebody who absolutely is an opponent of the law of attraction. You realize that there's, you know, there's no scientific evidence that supports it, uh, and it's a preposterous idea. Uh, so the notion is, is insane, so you remove it from your mind, and you are going into business, and you're going at it by yourself, um, and you, you know, you're taking on all of these uh, uh, obstacles that small business owners take on alone. Your road is going to be full of struggle and hard as, as it is uh, when taking on anything that big. Uh, but it, it might be much harder than it needs to be um, because, like I said, you're in a psychological state where you're taking it on alone and it's very hard. Anybody that's in business will tell you that you don't do business by yourself ever. You always rely on people, joint ventures, uh, uh, angel investors help in, in every form and if nothing else, if it's not help, you still need people to buy your stuff from you, whatever it is you're selling. So you always need people. But you're going at this and totally, you know, pushing out of your mind the concept of the law of attraction. You're not actually putting anything out there to attract to you uh, circumstances that could help because you don't believe that's possible. Whereas then you have the guy who believes in this stuff. The gentleman believes that when he puts out these positive thoughts, um, he attracts to himself people and circumstances that will help further him in his goal, okay? Even if it's not a, a quantum dynamic event, but purely psychological, being in that mind state is going to cause that gentleman to be more intuitive, and this is how I believe that's going to happen. Uh, when he's in social circumstances or when he's doing business, uh, he's constantly going to be uh, kind of alert to certain languages and, and certain words and, and body languages and, and, and things that are said in, these de in the developing of these relationships uh, that might kind of set off uh, a trigger in his mind, an alert in his mind that this person could be someone that could help him. Um, also, he'll be much more mindful of the constant relationships that he's building. The idea is that if you're constantly focused, whatever it is that you're focused on, you attract to you. Whether or not that's a scientific fact doesn't matter. The idea is that if you're focused on drawing to you people that can help you in your endeavor, then you'll be much more mindful about the relationships you're building. You'll be much more mindful about the language that you're using and the language that you're perceiving other people use. And in that mindful state, in that intuitive state, you're going to pick up on things and you're going to develop the right relationships. And no, every person that you come across isn't going to help you in your business. But the point is, is it puts you out there putting yourself out there more. And the more you put yourself out there, the more you draw on, as opposed to the person who doesn't subscribe to any of that and so he's not in that mindful state so for him it's just struggle 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 you know he might miss opportunities he might not catch you know um, the the language of somebody that could have helped him uh, and therefore maybe passed up a, a lengthy conversation with that person or maybe uh, uh, you know decided to pass up a networking event where he could have met somebody that that could really help him my point is is the reason why the law of attraction is such a hot topic is because it gets results. Uh, and it has been for a long time. I mean, these concepts were taught by uh, James Allen in As a Man Thinketh, which is a really old book. And in it, he states to take 
responsibility for every action, every circumstance, everything, good and bad, whether or not it seems like it was in your control or not. Opponents of the law of attraction will tell you that's preposterous. How could you possibly take responsibility over you know, uh, a family member perishing in a car accident that you weren't a part of? Uh, to, to even think that you could sit there and, and manifest that, I mean, that's just morbid. But James Allen says that, not, may, maybe not because he's telling you that you're actually manifesting it in the physical world, but by taking responsibility for everything, you relinquish no control to anybody but yourself. The responsibility you take, the more control you take. The less responsibility you take, the more control you relinquish. Because when you don't take responsibility for things, even for things that were clearly not within your realm of control at all, uh, even when you don't take responsibility for those things, you also relinquish just a little bit of control over your life. And the more of that you do, the less control you have, uh, the less you're going to be able to manifest or, or, or attract to you circumstances of any kind. So, let's step back objectively and look at this. Um, rather than be concerned about whether or not there's a scientific way uh, that you can explain the exact um, quantum dynamic event that occurred, um, you know, from the very moment that an idea created a neuropeptide that then uh, somehow, some way turns into a frequency that is released by the uh, cortical field and transmitted to somebody else's, or whether or not, you know, none of that is actually the case and every bit of it is psychological. It worked. Who cares? So that's kind of the point that I wanted to make. And now I want to go ahead and also let you all know the reason why I've been out of pocket, I haven't made a video in a while, I haven't posted, uh, you know, a lot. Uh, or as frequently in a while is because I'm working on co-writing a book. This is not a book on the Law of Attraction, even though that was the discussion that we just had, but more on the actual uh, practical strategies on unlocking uh, the, the abilities of your brain. Because a lot of people, you know, have said all that you only use 10% of your brain, even though that we, we figured out that that's a complete and total uh, false statement. The point of the matter is, is we hear about how the brain is the most powerful tool in the entire universe. You can, I mean, it has massive computing powers that uh, are far beyond anything that we've created in the way of a computer, you know. Um, but yet, a lot of us are just average, you know, other than outside of professional athletes and scientists and techno wizards like Bill Gates um, we're just average individuals so it's like well if I have this piece of equipment in my head that can do all that then you know why am I not seeing those results because you might not know how so this is basically an updated modern blueprint for how to use your brain it's kind of a, a user guide for your for your mind uh, that we're providing uh, that we're writing and it's called Get Limitless. Be on the lookout for that. It's coming real soon. Thank you so much for tuning in, and y'all be well.